Ukrainian troops have used HIMARS multiple launch rocket systems two times in the past few days, striking Russia's S-300 and 400 air defense system and killing 13 Russian soldiers in the south and east of Ukraine. According to Ukrainian telegram channels, the first case of the use of the US-made HIMARS was recorded on October 30 when Ukrainian troops struck the location of one of the units of the 104th Airborne Regiment of the 76th Airborne Division of Russia's Airborne Forces in southern Kherson region, Skadovsk city. The strike was carried out by two missiles. As a result of the strike, 11 military personnel of the regiment were killed and 14 others were injured. In the recent attack carried out on November 1, an S-300-400 air defense system was struck near Mospino village in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk region. The strike was carried with the use of six Atakms ballistic missiles, three of which were shot down. Two Russian military personnel were killed and 12 others were injured as a result of the attack. Information regarding damage to the military equipment is being clarified. HIMARS has been used to strike dozens of Russian military targets since the start of the war in February 2022. The US-made rocket system is key in Ukraine's defense has been praised by President Volodymyr Zelensky as changing the course of the war against Russia. North Korean soldiers will face the wrath of kamikaze drones for the first time during the war in Ukraine, Eurasian Times reports. Russian soldiers are already well acquainted with the sound of drone rotors, which often signals the danger of an attack. But for North Korean troops recently sent to the front, encountering Ukrainian drones could come as a real shock. North Korea's intention to give its soldiers combat experience could result in significant losses. Once on the Ukrainian-Russian front, the DPRK recruits will encounter Ukrainian attack and reconnaissance drones, which even Russian units have gradually become accustomed to. Symbolically, the Soviet Union once supported North Korea in the Korean War, providing it with weapons and equipment. Now, 70 years later, the situation has changed. About 3,000 North Korean soldiers have arrived in Russia since October. Their time on the front lines is expected to be an opportunity to test new equipment and gain invaluable combat experience. According to Major General Mandeep Singh, the deployment of North Korean troops to Russia is part of an agreement reached between the leaders of both countries in June 2024. It is worth understanding that the DPRK still uses outdated weapons, mostly of Soviet origin, and has minimal experience in conventional armed conflict. Most of its 1.3 million troops are concentrated on guarding the border with South Korea and these forces have limited training for combat operations as part of other armies. The North Korean units will likely be used to guard rear facilities, replacing Russian units at border positions. This will allow Russia to transfer more of its troops to the front lines, which is especially important given NATO's support for Ukrainian forces. CNN reports that some North Korean soldiers are already in Ukraine. Their numbers are expected to grow. At the same time, State Department spokesman Matthew Miller announced a meeting of US and South Korean diplomats and military officials to discuss troop deployments and expanding relations between Moscow and Pyongyang. The publication's sources reported that a significant portion of the deployed troops are special forces. The DPRK government considers them stronger than the Russians and also wants them to gain combat experience in a real war. Officials believe that at least some of the soldiers will desert almost immediately after arriving on the battlefield. The language barrier will also be a problem for them. Putin's army is advancing along almost the entire front line, but all attacks are sloppy and cost Russia dearly. In Kursk region, on October the 15th, occupiers from the 810th Brigade decided to drive between two Ukrainian Armed Forces tanks in an armored vehicle. As a result, they were shot at point-blank range. 
Forbes reports. In the West, military experts called these events the closest combat of armored vehicles in the history of the war. Two days after those events, Ukrainian forces found one occupier near the destroyed armored personnel carrier. He was still alive, and he was 19 years old. He admitted that he did not see the shot itself, but only heard a loud sound. He miraculously got out of the armored vehicle. What is happening along the entire front line on the part of the Russian armed forces is a consequence of the lack of professional soldiers. The Kremlin's main goal is to occupy as much Ukrainian territory as possible. Putin's army is in too much of a hurry to carry out the dictator's orders, going into battle almost unprepared. One of the occupiers, who is 28 years old, said he joined the Russian armed forces on July the 11th. By August the 13th, he was already on the front line in the Toretsk area, and six days later, he became 300th. Hasty planning and disinterested leadership put Russian soldiers at extreme risk. When a Russian APC drives right up to a Ukrainian tank, it is not necessarily the crew's fault, even if the crew is poorly trained. They may have been told they would encounter friendly forces and they mistook the Ukrainian vehicles for their allies. Perhaps their commanders assured them that all nearby Ukrainian tanks had been destroyed. Be that as it may, the enemy's losses have increased sharply since October 2024, when the Kremlin began to increasingly drive its soldiers forward. As of Monday, the Russian armed forces' losses amounted to 100 armored vehicles and over 170 wounded and killed. If this is not a record, then it is close to it. The Kremlin has increased one-time payments and salaries to lure Russians into the Russian armed forces. At the same time, the Russian Federation is strongly counting on assistance from the DPRK. Russia's war losses in Ukraine have sharply increased, with Ukrainian troops killing 1,460 enemy soldiers over the past 24 hours. The latest figure brought Russia's total combat losses to 696,410 since the beginning of a full-scale war, according to the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. In a statement published on Telegram app on Friday, the general staff also revealed Russia's losses in terms of military equipment. Thus, Ukrainian troops destroyed dozens of Russian equipment, including six more tanks as well as 20 armored combat vehicles during the hostilities in the past day alone. Overall, Ukrainian troops have destroyed 18,470 armored vehicles, 20,039 artillery systems, 369 planes, 329 helicopters, 18,088 operational tactical UAV and other military hardware and equipment during the full-fledged invasion by Kremlin in February 2022. Meanwhile, Russian sources reported today that Russian troops have captured Leonidovka, Novokrenka and Shaktersko villages in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk region. In addition, Russian troops have advanced and captured the settlements of Selodovo, Gornyak, Tsukarino, Leonidovka and Izmolovka in Donetsk region, according to Russian media reports. It should be noted that Russia has stepped up attacks in Donetsk region in recent days. There have been multiple reports about Russian forces advancing in this direction of the front line.